Having your account spoofed or hijacked on social media like Facebook and Instagram can quickly turn into a nightmare. What's worse, Spotlight on America discovered a major spike in complaints nationwide. And all too often, social media companies do little to help their own users who've been hacked. I knew immediately that I was hacked. California mom Sonia Gomez was the victim of a Facebook takeover. They had sent me something like at 2 in the morning saying that there was a login in Hong Kong. Within hours, hackers falsely posted she had a new job at Crypto.com and was helping people make big money. I've never worked in crypto, ever, ever, ever. The scammers changed her password and locked her out, but Gomez says Facebook wouldn't help. Every time I would report it, they would respond like they don't see nothing wrong with this page. It turned into a several month ordeal to regain control of her own page. Facebook will do absolutely nothing about it. Look at this. Scott Vreeland of Georgia also says Facebook wouldn't help him when his deceased brother's account was hacked. Sean Vreeland was a disabled Army veteran. After he died of a heart attack in 2022, scammers took over his account, using it to pitch yet another cryptocurrency scam. The scammer also removed all of the posts from the family saying, you know, condolences and all that stuff and all the pictures we had posted. Vreeland says Facebook wouldn't respond even after he mailed them his brother's death certificate. My brother was a hardworking man. He was honest. He was a veteran and he really deserves to rest with, you know, with a clean name and rest in peace. Unfortunately, Breland and Gomez are far from alone. Earlier this year, a bipartisan group of 41 state attorneys general sent a letter to Meta, Facebook and Instagram's parent company, demanding immediate action to address what they called a dramatic and persistent spike in complaints about account takeovers and lockouts. They cited sharp increases in multiple states, complaints up 270 percent in Pennsylvania, 256 percent in Illinois, 330 percent in North Carolina, and 740% in Vermont. There is no legitimate phone number for customer service for any of the social media account platforms, period. Eva Velasquez is president and CEO of the nonprofit Identity Theft Resource Center. She blames growing complaints on shrinking customer service. They don't have enough people actually providing this support to users. They've tried to automate everything. No matter how frustrated you get, unfortunately, there's not much you can do, even if a social media platform won't take down fraudulent information. Those lengthy terms of service agreements most of us just click and accept are packed with legalese that overwhelmingly give the companies an edge if you try to sue. Even more protection comes from Section 230 of the Communications Act, a 30-year-old law that shields social media companies from liability. Congress has been working to update the law for years with no success. Why is this taking so long? Well, there's a lot of powerful interests. There's a lot of disagreement. Some politics gets in the way. Orlando area representative Darren Soto is pushing for Congress to do more to regulate social media giants. We want to be able to shield people's identities from this kind of theft that happens online. In April, he introduced the SHIELD Act to give social media users more legal rights to get platforms to take down false information and potentially sue if the companies don't do it in a timely fashion. You can't have privacy rights and no ability to enforce them. That's a toothless tiger. Spotlight on America contacted Meta about the rise in complaints over account takeovers. A spokesperson didn't answer our specific questions, but sent a statement saying, we know that losing and recovering access to your online accounts can be a frustrating experience. We invest heavily in designing account security systems to help prevent account compromise in the first place. Do these social media platforms have a moral obligation to do more? And honestly, I do not expect companies to just do things out of goodwill. It's a free market system. Morally, there's a lot of things companies could be doing. It's Congress's inaction that's the biggest problem right now. Little comfort for social media users like Sonia, whose friend ended up being scammed by the hackers out of $15,000. It wasn't until our Spotlight partner, KMPH in Fresno, contacted Facebook on Sonia's behalf that the platform finally gave her back control of her own page. 
And the brother of veteran Sean Breland ended up filing suit against Facebook to get their attention. After eight months, Breland says the social media giant finally memorialized his brother's account this April. For Spotlight on America, I'm Angie Moreski.